Hi, today we're looking at Functional Skills Maths Entry Level 2. This is the Pearson and Excel exam board. We've got past paper 5 and we're going to start with the non-calculator section. Rose wants to go on a cycling holiday. She buys two pairs of cycling shorts. The shorts cost £39 and £52. Complete the calculation of £39 plus 52 because so you can write it as a column like this and say so, well what's 9 plus 2 starting with the units so start with 9 count on 2 we get 10 11 so put the 1 for the units and carry 1 for the 10s 3 plus 5 well let's start with the bigger number the 5 and count on 3 we've got 6 7, 8, plus the 1 that we carried makes it 9. So we get 91. A different way of thinking about it is, well, 39 is only 1 away from 40. So if we add on 1, we'd get 40. So if we add 1, we need to take 1 away from here. Well, 2 minus 1 would be 1. So we'd just end up with 51. Then we, when we want to add 40 and 51... It's much more straightforward because adding the tens, four and five gives us nine or ninety, and now we've just got the one. So just an alternative way of thinking about it, or maybe to use as a check. Question two. Rose will cycle 47 kilometres on day one of the holiday. She will cycle 75 kilometres on day two. How much further will Rose cycle on day two than on day one? So we want the difference between them. So really what we're saying is 75 minus 47. That's going to give us the difference between them. So again, we can think of it as a column, but a subtraction. So we can have 75 minus 47. Now, if we do it this way, we still start with the units, but we want to do 5 minus 7. Well, 7 is bigger than 5. So what we need to do is to make the 5 bigger so we can take the 7 away from it. And the way we can do that is instead of being 5, we can make it 15 by taking 1 from here. So the 7 goes down by 1 to make it 6. And we pass a 10 across, which makes this 15. So 15 minus 7, well if we count back 7 from 15, we have 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So we're left with 8 here. And now we've got 6 minus 4. Start with 6, we'll count back 4. 5, 4, 3, 2. So we're left with 28, which we can write on here. You could... If you want to do it another way, you could start with the 47 and count up to the 75, and that will still give you an answer of 28. Question 3. Rose buys eight wristbands. Each wristband costs 12p. Complete the calculation. And we've got 8 times 12. Well, we've been doing some column calculations, so we could do the multiplication as a column, but I'm going to split this up, and I'm going to say, well, 12 is 10 and 2. Okay, and you might think, well, that's obvious, 10 and 2 makes 12. But what that means is we can turn this calculation into 8 times 10. So we never, instead of thinking of 12 eights, we've got 10 eights and then 8 times 2, and then 2 eighths. The reason for doing this is, well, 8 times 10 is nice and straightforward because we're just going to add the 0 on the end to make it 80. And 8 times 2, well, if you can do your 2 times table with a bit of, bit of practice, then we're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 
Now, instead of it being a multiplication, we've got a sum. So we can add our 80 with our 16. So 0 plus 6 is 6. 8 plus 1 is 9. And we've got 96. Okay, so we've turned it into an addition instead of thinking of it as a multiplication. Question 4. Rose buys energy bars for the holiday. She wants to pack 50 of the bars in her suitcase. The energy bars are only sold in boxes of six. How many boxes does Rose buy? Show how many bars are left over. Okay, so we want to know how many times six will fit into 50. But they've said how many bars are left over, so six might not go into 50 exactly. But so what we're saying is 50 divided by six. Well, let's do some with our six times table. So one six is six, two sixes are 12, three sixes are 18, four sixes are 24, five sixes are 30, six sixes are 36, seven sixes are 42. And if you're not sure with your six times table, you could just count on six each time. So we're up to seven sixes of 42. So 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So we've got eight sixes of 48. And then 49, 50, we're gonna hit 50. So we're gonna to have to stick with eight sixes or eight times six is 48. And then how many more bars? Well, we need to get up to 50. So actually we're gonna to have to go beyond eight. We're gonna to have to go to the next one. So remember, if this was our eight, another six, would be 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So eight sixes are 48, nine sixes are 54. So to get a 50, we're gonna to have to go up to this one and we're gonna to have to buy nine boxes. Okay. But she's not gonna take all 54 of them. She's only gonna take 50. So how many is she gonna have left over? Well. If we think 54, and we're only taking 50, 4 minus 0 is still 4, and 5 minus 5 is 0. So we're going to have 9 boxes and 4 left over. And we can write that down here. And now on to the calculator section. Question one. Rose goes cycling. She buys fruit for 40p and crisps for 48p. How much does Rose pay in total for the fruit and crisps? Use the correct symbol for money. Well, we've got 40p plus 48p. We can type this in our calculator, 40 plus 48. We can't put the p in there. So we just work with the numbers and then we have to put the P back on ourselves. Question two, round 48 to the nearest 10. Right, so we're thinking in tens. So like 10, 20, 30, 40. So 48, well, it's more than 40. And the next 10 up from 40 would be 50. So we can see that 48 must be in between these two numbers. These are the two tens. So one of these is going to be our answer. Let's think about what halfway would be. Well, halfway between 40 and 50, well, half, the gap is 10. Half of 10 is 5. So that halfway is going to be 45. And 48, is it going to fall in this section or this section? Well, it's more than 45, so it's going to fall over here which means it's going to round up to 50. You can also use the rule that if it's five or more, we round to the nearest 10, which is 50. But I think drawing the number line really helps because straight away we know what our two possible answers are and then we just have to find out which way we're going. 
Question 2, part B. Use the rounded number to check your answer to question 1. So question 1, we were doing 40 plus 48. But in part 2A, we're saying instead of 48, let's treat it as 50. So what we're trying to do is 40 plus 50. And we've got our calculator. And we get 90 P, which is approximately, sort of squiggly equal sign, approximately equal to 88 P. So that's our check. That's all we're after. Question three. Rose cycles nine kilometers each day for seven days. She works out how far she cycles she does 9 something 7 equals 63. What is the missing symbol? Okay, well, you might know this one straight away, and if you do, that's excellent. If not, you can test them all out. So we can say, well, what about if it was plus? So 9 plus 7? No, that's not 63. What about if we use minus? 9 minus 7? But also, that doesn't really make sense, is it? Why would we be taking away? But it's not this one. What about if we do multiply or times? 9 times 7 is 63. And that makes sense. If she's doing 9 kilometres for 7 days, that's like 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, plus 9 which would be our 7 days. Question 4. The best weight for cyclists depends on their height. These are the best weights for different heights. So we've got if the height, if they're 166 centimetres tall, then the best weight is 55 kilograms. If they're 167 centimetres tall, then 56 kilograms, and so on. Rose has a height of 167 centimetres and a weight of 59 kilograms. Does Rose have the best weight for cycling? So if she's 167, let's find that, that's 167, so the best weight would be 56 kilograms. She's 59 kilograms, so does she have the best weight? And oh, we can say, no. Show why you think this, well, her best weight would be 56 kilograms. And we want to make sure we remember to tick no down here. Question five. Rose wants to buy new cycling shoes. She has 50 pounds to spend. Rose buys the most expensive black shoes she can. Which shoes does Rose buy? So we've got a few important things here. She has 50 pounds to spend. She wants the most expensive ones that she can, so up to £50, and she wants black shoes. So well, these are white, so we can rule those out. These are white as well. Uh, she's got £50, so that's under 50 that's under 50 that's over, so we can't have those, and that's under as well, so that's fine the most expensive, so we want the biggest number out of the black shoes that we've got left. So we've got 46, 39, well 39 is less than 46, so we don't want those. 48, 48 is more than 46, so we're going to go with those. Question 6. Rose cycles for 6 hours in one day. She thinks that six hours is half of one day. Is Rose correct? Well, there's 24 hours in one day. So if we want half of one day, we want half of 24. Well, that's the same as saying 24 divided by 2 which is 12. 
So it's not equal to 6. So is Rose correct? No. In fact, we can tick down there. Question 7. Rose has this information about cycling shirts. We've got different cycling shirts. We've got the colour and we've got the price. Rose buys the cheapest red shirt. How much does Rose pay? Okay. So she wants a red one. So it could be this one. So it can't be that one. It can't be that one. It could be this one. It can't be that one. And it could be either of those. The cheapest. So we want the smallest number. Or 45. 42 is less than 45. Uh, 29 is less than 42. And 38 is more. So we're going to stick with the 29. So how much does Rose pay? Twenty-nine pounds, and they've already put the pound sign in for us. Question eight: Rose books a cycling holiday. The diagram shows the shape of a cycling route. What is the name of the shape of the route? Well. The way that we, we know the names of our shapes is by looking at how many sides they've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five sides. So that is a pentagon. Question nine. These are the costs of the holiday. So the cost of the food is £85. The bus is £78, guides are £93, and the camping is £87. Show the cost for camping on the chart. So we've got a bar chart here. We've got food, bus and guides already marked on here. We need to include camping, and camping is £87. Okay, so we're going to... Use our scale up here. We've got 80, we've got 85. Well, let's check what each of these are. Are they going up in ones? 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Yeah, so 86. We want 87, but we want it for camping. So if we read across, we're going to want it somewhere here. Now I'm going to use my ruler. You could measure to make sure your bars are exactly the same width as those, or you can do it. Approximately, so I'm going to do an approximate one here. Yeah, so you, you can measure it if you want to. There you go. So we've got a bar that's the same width as those. You don't have to colour it in. You can just leave it empty, and that's all we need for that question. Question ten. Rose is in a cafe. She's going to cycle to the top of a hill. The thermometer shows the temperature in a cafe, or cath, however you want to pronounce it. Right. And this marking here, that's showing us the temperature there, where it's coloured up to. And it says the temperature on the top of the hill is 9 degrees. How much colder is it on top of the hill than in the cafe to the nearest division? Now when they say nearest division, they mean the nearest marking one of these lines. So what are we nearest to? Well that's the top and it's closest to this marking really which is 24 degrees. So how much colder is it? It's 9 degrees at the top so what we want, we want to know the difference. So we've got 24 degrees as our starting. We want to subtract 9 degrees that will tell us how much colder it is on the top. So, use our calculator, 24 minus 9, and that gives us 15 degrees, which we can put down here, and they've already put the units in for us. Question 11. A road race... Oh, let me just move this up the right way. A road race starts and ends at Kendall. The map shows Kendall Town 
and the villages near it. We've got a number of different villages. Beckfoot, the Lake, Lapland, Levens, a few others there as well. And we're told here that the arrow indicates the route of the race and the dotted line is, an, is another road. And then we've got a village is the rectangle with the thin line and the town is with a big thick line around the rectangle. How many villages does the route go through? Okay. Right. It starts and ends at Kendall. So we're starting here. And we're going to follow these thick lines. These are the route it's following. So it's going to do one village. It's then going to go along here. Another village. This lane here. So three villages. We're following these arrows. Four villages, so that was one, two, three, four villages. Going along to here, that's five villages. Then it goes along this solid arrow to Burnside, that's six villages before coming back to Kendall. So one, two, three, four, five, six, but it doesn't go through Crook, so just the six. So we can tick six down here. Question 12. The diagram shows part of the route for the race. Which sentence is correct? And we've got four sentences down here. And it says which sentence is correct. So it's just one of them. The route goes through the middle of the forest. No, the forest is over here. It's not going through the forest. So it's not that one. The route goes on top of the lake. No, the lake's over here. The route's going up there, so it's not on top of the lake. The route goes inside the lake and the forest. Inside? Well, no, it's not going inside the lake. Oh, sorry, I read the second one. The route goes on top of the lake, so that wasn't right. And it doesn't go inside the lake either. So neither of those. The route goes between the lake and the forest. We've got the lake this side, the forest this side. So yes. It is going between the two of them. So it's that final sentence there. Question 13. The race organiser puts a sign on the road. The sign is in the shape of a pyramid with a square base. The sign has information on every face that people can see. On how many faces can people see information? So if it's every face people can see, it's going to be these faces on the top, but it won't include the square at the bottom. On how many faces can people see information? Well, we've got this one face coming off the front, second face coming off the side on the right, a third face coming up from the back, and a fourth face coming up from the left. So we can tick four. Question 14. The race starts at a quarter to eleven. The clock shows the time now. Is it time for the race to start? Show why you think this. Okay, well, the little hand is after the ten, so the current time is going to be ten something. And we've got here, well, this is on, well, anything on the right side of the clock is going to be past and everything on this side is going to be 2. So we know it's after 10 so it's going to be a quarter, because it's a quarter of the way around, a quarter past 10. So we can think of that as 10.15 or a quarter past 10, which is not the same as a quarter to 11, which would need us to have the minute hand pointing to the nine. So is it time for the race to start? No. Show sure why you think this. Because the time is a quarter 
past 10. And we can tick the no down here. Question 15. Each cyclist in the race has a number. Here are the numbers for the cyclists. So we've got 12, 19, 26, 32, 37, 41, 46 and 50. Cyclists with even numbers go out in the morning. Cyclists with odd numbers go out in the afternoon. How many cyclists go out in the morning? Well, the morning ones with the even numbers. So the even numbers, they're all numbers that are going to end in a 0, or a 2, or a 4, or a 6, or an 8. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the last question. Question 16. The bar chart shows the race times for the cyclists that finish in the first four positions. So we've got the race time in minutes on the left. We've got their position to first, second, third and fourth here. What is the difference in race time between the first position and the second position? Right, so first position. So we're going to read off of the top. So that's going to be here. So if we're 75 down here, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. So first place did it in 79 minutes. And we want to know the difference between the first and second position. Well, second position, let's draw a line across. That's here. Well, to find out how many minutes this is, we start at... Uh, well, we've got a number below, so we're going to be 81, 82, 83, 84. This would be 85 up here. So 84 minutes. We want the difference between the first and second. So for the difference, we subtract the smaller number away from the bigger number. Bigger number is 84. So we've got 84 minus 79. which gives us 5. And put that down here. They've already given us the units as minutes. So 5 minutes. So I hope you found the video helpful. Please like it, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.